How can I lose weight while eating good and tasty foods while also being kind of lazy? Is that possible? It might be. Real simple. You just keep it green, lean, mean, clean proteins. Uh, we got to talk about it because I'm telling you, a lot of people were asking for my diet breakdown because I want to create something or I want to share information that's out there for lazy people. Right. I repeat, David is kind of lazy when it comes to cooking food. So, Hear them out. I mean, these are things that you do on a daily basis. Also, I do them too. I partake in it. But I guess like they've worked for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what I realized as a lot of the fitness experts on YouTube are not lazy. So, oh. how, so sometimes their advice, it's not fully connecting with people because they're telling you to do this, do that. That's complicated. It takes time, effort, cooking, cleaning. And guess what? A lot of people, they just don't want to do that. Right. So no, they're I, only going to do it if it's easy. Yeah, I did, dude, I see a lot of those healthy recipes, those high protein recipes, and they look like they take a long time to cook, like hours to cook. Now, maybe it's meal prepping. Maybe it's worth it. You cook like six meals at one time. But anyways, David, this is for the people. Low lift. It's relatively easy, relatively simple. And not only that, you've seen us eat tons of delicious things so you know what we, that we know what good food is. Sometimes some of these fitness influencers, Andrew, they might not have the taste buds. Guys, we've eaten a lot of de delicious food. And by the way, if you want to make your lean food delicious, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon right now. Yes, it is an oil. Well, don't drink it. Just use it to finish off your food. It's delicious. Point number one, you got to keep things Super, super simple and lazy. Sometimes, Andrew, I'm not even going to eat strawberries versus raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries because you have to cut the top off a strawberry. Right. But strawberries do have a lot of vitamin C per weight. Just yeah. pointing it out. Because I think a lot of people, you can go on all these YouTube channels. They've got all these like high protein bean black bean brownies and stuff like that it takes time that's why you just got to cook chicken drumsticks uh. because chicken drumsticks they cook a lot easier even than chicken thigh chicken thigh there's even it kind of gets complicated because the chicken thigh has different levels of height throughout the thigh right also chicken breasts i mean it's a little easier to uh dry out but david how do you cook all these delicious chicken drumsticks so easily you have to cook them in the air fryer literally i will not cook a single thing that it isn't cooked in an air fryer because i can confirm this david uses the air fryer for almost everything because you can just put the parchment paper in there foil parchment there's basically a lot of ways where basically you never have to clean the air fryer yeah yeah um also i'm gonna throw in there the egg steamer i love my egg steamer steaming food not only adds zero calories to it, but it can also possibly help dissolve some fat on foods. So think about a steamer, but if it was between the steamer or the air fryer, obviously the air fryer is more versatile and does a lot more. Get the air fryer. And when you keep things super simple, you're going to tend to cook things with one or two ingredients. And when you cook single ingredient foods, it's actually healthier. Yeah, and if you think about it, it's like air fryer. You're just like going to put a few things together on this parchment paper, and then you're going to shove it in there. Let it maybe slow cook so it doesn't burn or dry out. And then you're just going to pull it out, eat it, and then throw away the parchment paper. So it's very, very simple to be eating hot foods. So I, I showed you guys some photos of some super complex, healthy things. The, I put these at medium complexity, like these zucchini boats and these mushroom pepperoni, turkey pepperoni poppers, and this wannabe chipotle bowl. I'm going to make it even simpler when I cook. I'm just talking about asparagus, salmon, avocado, egg, avocado, and this Chobani zero sugar. This takes no prep. Yeah. Hey, you steam the eggs. They're sitting there. You cut open the avocado. Boom. You got eggs and avocado. Sprinkle a little salt and pepper, maybe. Boom. Yes. So point number two, Andrew, modified diets. Mm. Modified diets are key because everybody's always like, oh, I can't keep that diet. I can't keep paleo. I can't keep that. I can't keep this. So you do a light modified version of a right. diet. I mean, isn't it that some diets are honestly just intimidating. They like are they're super. just like, be on keto, hit ketosis, and then you don't eat, you eat, cut out all sugars in your life. It's like, whoa, hold on, guys. Like, I, First I of all, enjoy. it does work, by the way, but you have to be incredibly disciplined. That's why most people don't do it. Mm -hmm. So when we take a look at the ancestral diet, which is even has less restrictions than paleo, it allows you to eat all these different things, which are all pretty enjoyable. And on top of that, you don't even have to do a full ancestral diet. You just do light ancestral. Yeah. I mean, I think, guys, when you talk about picking up a diet, 
Like a diet can literally be, hey guys, I'm just going to eat a little bit less food and eat less carbs. That's, if you can actually stick to that, that's already the great beginning to a great diet. Right. And the ancestral diet is basically, essentially foods that your grandparents would recognize. Mm. Obviously a pop tart is not in there because your grandparents would look at a pop tart and they would have no clue what that was. Mm, those pop tarts are delicious though. Same with those toaster strudels. Uh, point number three, use very simple phrases and very simple rules. For example, here's something. You take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Yeah. I mean, David, you got sugar and starch make you large. Singular proteins keep you so lean. Um, I just made this one up. Meat and veggies keep you from being heavy. If you have to eat carbs, make sure you burn it off. So basically, this is acknowledging that sometimes you need carbs for energy, but just make sure you have them earlier in the day so you have a, give yourself a chance to burn it off. Yeah. Yeah, and I definitely, like, obviously the most dangerous carbs that you can easily overeat are kind of the, the sugar carbs. You know, that stuff will just make you more and more hungry. Right. Uh, lift light, but lift right. Mm. So basically, this is saying you can use lighter weights, but make sure you have the proper form. You're in control of the weight. You go slow. What about this one, David? It says, if it comes from a plant or it ate a plant, it's good. If it was produced in a manufacturing plant, it's bad. This is probably the simplest way to break it down. Listen, if it is either a plant or it's an animal that ate plants and you can recognize it, it's good. If it was produced in a manufacturing plant, it's bad. But you know what's interesting about that? That even includes sausages and cold cuts. No. Because where, where do those come from? I mean, you could get them from a butcher. Okay, but you, sausages but, but, could be more simple, but most sausages are made- We're talking about the majority of sausages. In manufacturing plants, yes, yes, yes. Uh, restaurants do not care about your health and wellness. Their sole objective is for you to enjoy it and keep on spending money on food and drinks. Yeah. I mean, we love restaurants, obviously, but most restaurants are there, especially the sit-down ones. They want you to buy a lot of drinks, but I want you to buy dessert, buy an appetizer. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to spike your dopamine like a coca fiend. Oh, Ah, fight the human propensity for caloric density. Because caloric density is a scientific word, but fight that human propensity to err towards caloric density. Woo, bars. Um, there's a, so basically for a lot of things in life, there's a simple explanation and then there's the granular explanation, right? Like calories in, calories out is hyper simple. That's the Turkish shooter. He won the silver, right? Or you can be like Kim Yeji, who also won the gold medal, which is better than silver. She does organic everything, grass-fed meats, ACV for breakfast, blood glucose monitor, ketone strips, 72-hour fasting, 12, 3, 30 workout. That's an incline uh, treadmill workout, daily body fat scan, MCT oil and coffee, and lemon water to break down the fats. Whoa. Well, it kind of goes to show you. Most people would be better off using the Turkish guy's approach, but the hyper elite athletes are probably going to be doing what Kim Yeji did. Right, right. Well, with more uh, equipment and more details, right? Mm -hmm. More science, more granular. Point number four, for me, you have to figure out how many calories you want to consume every day. For me, I'll probably have between 2,200 and 2,700 calories a day. But a lot of people, Andrew, they have no idea what somebody of their gender, weight, height and goals should be consuming. Right, yeah, I mean, I guess this is interesting. You know, uh, most people don't want to count calories, period. You know, counting calories, like, is so tiring. I know friends who try to input everything they ate, and I was like, I don't want to do that. But for me, uh, I think the simplest way to cut out calories is to not eat a meal. You skip a meal. Easiest one is breakfast, in my opinion. I intermittent fast. Sometimes, I fast for 12 hours, but a lot of the time I'm fasting for 14 to 16 hours, sometimes even more. I don't even know about it. I'm just caught up in work. So what I'm saying is that's an easy way for me to cut out like five, 700 calories right there. Right. Uh, for me personally, when it comes to like gaining muscle, I hate the idea of a dirty bulk. And a dirty bulk is you're eating all basically calorically dense, dirty, bad foods to try to bulk up. And then you're going to slim down later. I think a lot of people dirty bulk and never bounce back from it. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you get dirty, but you never clean yourself. That's crazy. Yeah, I would, to me, that's too risky. Because to me, unless I got to gain weight for like some particular reason. A strongman competition. A competition. Or uh, yeah, like a, 
a movie role. Yeah, I'm not in movies, but like if I had to gain weight for that. But other than that, if I wanted to get shredded, dirty bulking to me is dangerous because you're going to get essentially big and then you're just going to cut hard. Most people should not do it. I'm not saying it doesn't work for some people that you see it on the internet. The vast majority of people are not disciplined enough to come back from that. Yeah, Just eat less. Yeah, because you're going to be less. messing up all your taste buds and your insulin and your glucose levels during the dirty bowl. Yeah. To wean your body off of those addictions is going to be super hard. That's a really good point. You're going to get used to eating all those uh, delicious fatty foods. Point number five. Uh, if I'm lifting, I just got to keep it fun for myself. For example, with dumbbells, I really like complex dumbbell combos. Uh, I really actually like doing it in, them in the sauna. Mm. So basically, it's equi- it's the, that would be the equivalent of some version of P90X, but doing it in a dry sauna. Mm. That's basically you're burning double the calories or triple the calories, right? Because right. you're getting a whole body workout. You're doing heavily armed stuff, but you're getting your, your legs in there as well. But you're in the sauna, so the temperature's already raised up. Right. So I, I think there's like, so basically for me, that's like the cheat code. I'm only going to do exercises that are considered like really, really hyper effective. For example, like I know some people, they like to do every sort of like minute, strange exercise. I would just want to do like incline military press. Right, right. I don't right. need to do everything that like looks super crazy or, you know, a lot of cable stuff is like kind of weird to me. Yeah, I definitely like for me doing using one machine solely to focus on like one certain muscle. I don't know. It's not as fun for me. So for me, I like to do calisthenics because it's a full body workout. There's a little bit of swinging and stabilization involved. You burn different calories. You kind of burn, use all muscles in your body. So I... If you guys like pull-ups and push-ups and all those things, I recommend that. Well, yeah. I mean, it's different for everybody. Some people, they want to just move heavy amounts of steel and metal. Other people moving their own body weight is going to be the best way because uh, it's really like just whatever speaks to you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, here's what I would eat for breakfast, Andrew. I wanted to break it down for people. Originally, I was going to show people in an actual video, but it was just going to take way too much editing. For breakfast, I will make a steel oat cake with uh, some really low-fat almond milk in it. Basically, it'll turn into a cake. I'll put blueberries, bananas into it, apples, and uh, some light cinnamon sugar. Yeah. Um, it does look kind of funny when it comes out of the air fryer, but it tastes good. Uh, avocado. Listen, avocado is really easy. You don't need to do a ton of stuff to it. You just make slits in it. You cut it in half. Some, you know, soy sauce. Maybe you want to put sesame oil, olive oil, chili flakes if you want to get fancy. But you got to be careful on the sesame oil because it's got a lot of calories. Yeah, that's true. Uh, boiled eggs, Andrew. Steamed eggs, like you said. Andrew, a lot, I, I think one thing that people really overlook is you could have a gigantic top sirloin for breakfast for $7. Yeah, guys, there's no reason why you can't eat meat for breakfast. We're not telling you to eat a whole bunch of pancakes and bacon and high fat. But if you have a steak laying around, What's to say that's not bad breakfast food? Really, what? I mean, like... Like, you have for, steak and eggs. For most people, listen, unless you do, to be honest, a super laborious job that requires a lot of physical activity, then you don't need to eat that much carbs for breakfast. You can just eat meat and then get going. There's no, I don't see the issue with that. Some people might need some bread and grains and rice and whatever. Right, right, right. Um, sweet potatoes, whether they're, you're talking about the Japanese, Korean sweet potatoes to the more Western orange sweet potatoes to purple sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are probably like the biggest cheat code in terms of just like it tastes good and sweet and you could dress it up or dress it down if you want to throw seasonings and other stuff on there and you could go savory or sweet on it. And they're so easy to make, man. You pop them in the air fryer for like 22 minutes and just let them cook. If you pick the They long, don't even burn. Yeah, if you pick the long slender ones, you don't even have to poke it with a fork. You don't have to do anything to it. Mm -hmm. Um, for lunch, Andrew, chicken drumsticks. I'm going to say chicken drumsticks over chicken breast because it's way easier to eat. It's more fun to eat. It has the internal bone in the middle, which will help cook it more evenly. I'm just saying chicken drumsticks. Mm -hmm. For snacks, Andrew, mandarin oranges. A lot of people like little cuties, the cutie oranges. Okay. They're cute. Healthy Pop, Smart Pop. I know you're a big fan of Healthy Pop. I like popcorn. popcorn. I do like popcorn. I like Lesser Evil, too. I think that's a good brand. Are you? I know you're a fan of sliced cucumbers with hummus. Yeah, cucumbers are good. A lot of juice. Cucumbers themselves are low-cal. Obviously, you eat them with hummus. That's some calories. But hummus is like, you know, got some olive oil what, in it, but it's not too bad. Chickpeas, right? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's not bad. 
you know, carrots, obviously sardines, sardines, a little caloric dense, but sardines are actually pretty good. Like if I need to eat something out of a can, because sometimes you just have those like, you just need to eat something out of a can. Sardines over, over spam. Yeah. Uh, anything that's over 80% dark chocolate. Ho, ho. Anything that's over 80% is ho, good for ho. you. Also an aphrodisiac, apparently. Uh, Greek yogurt at 0% or Skyre. And then you can dress it up with honey, fruit, basil seeds. The one thing you want to stay away from is dried fruit, though. Yeah, dried fruit has a lot of sugar. I just put a little bit of honey in my yogurt now because, like, I need some sweetness. You can I use, need some you, sweetness. If you don't care about your stomach, you can use sugar-free maple syrup. But obviously, sometimes the uh, artificial sweeteners, they can or cannot, depending on your stomach, gut biome, and how it interacts with it. Strawberries with sugar-free dark chocolate pudding. Tastes like a dessert. Um, a lot of people are talking about using a lot of sugar-free cheesecake mixes and you can mix it in. Maybe you could throw it on a Kodiak protein waffle with some Skyer. It's going to be like a dessert. Um, caramel or chocolate rice cakes mm -hmm. taste really good, really low calories. For dinner, Andrew, a salmon filet, roasted broccoli, a sweet potato. You can even have pork ribs. Pork loin is particularly lean. Mm. Any protein plus mushrooms, garlic, and onions and peppers. Yeah, and plus, guys, if you have a very uh, extensive seasoning cabinet, it really makes things easy when you cook. Dry rubs. Like, you know, I know marinades are good, but marinades oftentimes have a lot of sugar, like barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce is great. Teriyaki sauce is great. Got a lot of sugar. If you really want it low sugar, you just hit it with some dry rub. Salt. Not too much salt, but salt. Kale with garlic and ginger stir fry. But you can stir fry it within an air fryer. You, it actually tastes somewhat like it's stir fried. Yep. Asparagus is really easy to make. Andrew, people saying this is the biggest cheat code. It's just a rotisserie chicken. Boom. Boom. Rotisserie chicken, probably anywhere from 7 to $12 at your local supermarket. Rotisserie chicken, man. It's already cooked for you. Shashuka with eggs and ground turkey. So basically, shashuka is actually like a Israeli breakfast food but you can make it with ground turkey and you can basically there's local substitutes for a lot of things. Just like I said earlier in an earlier video, chanko nabe, it's like one of my favorite things to eat. High calorie when sumos eat it, you can make a low calorie version if you use the shiraki noodles. And of course for dessert, Andrew, you got watermelon, Nick's ice cream with blackberries or Yasso caramel yogurt ice cream bars. Oh man, you know what I did the other day with some of the Nick's ice cream? I put that in some zero sugar root beer, a and root beer that we have. And it was root beer float. And it mm. kind of tasted pretty good. You know? No, and no, so, but it was the sugar-free, caffeine-free root beer. Yeah, it was the sugar-free, caffeine-free root beer from a and And then I put a scoop of the peanut butter Nix, which is a low-calorie ice cream. Not sugar-free ice cream. Guys, yeah, I get it. You know, ice cream needs some sugar, but... It was low-calorie ice cream, and it tasted really good. Right. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to say all this to expand on, like, the eating aspect of it. Because, listen, calorie intake, calorie output, right? It's as simple as it gets for 90% of the population. However, if you want to get more granular, of course, exactly where you get your calories from will affect your micro gut biome, your hormones, your BMR, your glucose, insulin levels, glycogen levels, thermic effect. And basically, if you want to take it to the next level... You have to understand and sort of calculate all these other aspects. Yep. So it's as simple as that, guys. Listen, this is from somebody who literally, I didn't know a single thing just like a year and a half ago, and now I know a lot. All right, everybody. Uh, let us know what you think in the uh, comments down below. Healthy eating for lazy guys. This can help you lose weight. You know, it's just the beginning. I'm not saying, you know, but if you do all these things, it's going to help. So... Leave it in the comments down below if you guys are looking for healthy, lazy diets. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.